Hello, and welcome to the NFCore Hackathon, online and distributed in March 2024. My name is Phil Yules. I'm Product Manager for Open Source Software at Secura, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all today and uh, give you a quick overview of uh, how the hack hackathon works, what to expect from the next few days. Uh, firstly, it's amazing to see so many of you here today. Um, signed up this year, we have 466 people, which is phenomenal. It's a record. Again, uh, it's the biggest hackathon we've ever hosted, I think. Um, and it's just brilliant that so many people are excited to turn up and uh, work together. They're really excited to see what we can achieve. Um, this year, when we have distributed sites, so we have 23 of you have uh, volunteered to host local sites all around the world. And the majority of people joining a hackathon are joining in person at one of those um, local sites. So 321 people uh, at local sites and 145 of you are joining online. So welcome, everybody. Um, I said it's a record. It's just brilliant looking at the online hackathons that we've had over the last three years and seeing these numbers kind of climb year on year, both in the number of attendees and the number of sites. So a great trend to see continuing. And uh, let's see how long we can keep this up. <laughs> um, we asked a few questions when you signed up just to kind of get a feel for the types of people attending. And just like as we have with basically every event we hold, the majority of you have never been to an NFCore hackathon. So if you're sat there not quite sure what's going to happen, or um, don't worry, you're kind of amongst friends, the majority of people at the event um, are also new to it. So um, of course, 159 of you have come back for more. Great to have you here. Um, but the 370 of you who have never been to an NFCore event or an NFCore hackathon before, I hope you enjoy this one and I hope you'll be in the light blue segment of the next time. <laughs> um, looking at the different local sites all the way around the world, we have a, firstly, the first thing that strikes me is that there's lots of them this year. Um, thanks again for everyone volunteering. It's amazing to see. And um, quite a range in how big the different sites are. Um, some of you uh, will be a group of people kind of in a meeting room, I imagine, and some are quite big sites. Um, this year around Heidelberg in Germany is, is uh, the winner <laughs> that most people are attending. A phenomenal turnout there, so welcome all of you. Um, and of course, the biggest site is, is online. So uh, yeah, those local sites have got a pretty good geographical spread. Uh, lots of you in Europe. Um, it's good to see a few more sites popping up across America. Um, and also in South America as well and, and, and Canada. So thank you all for joining, um, really good. If we look at who's joining, uh, including the attendees, we asked you where you live. Um, we can see we've got an even better geographical spread. So um, special kind of um, notes to those of you joining from India and further afield. Um, I hope you don't have to stay up too late. <laughs> Right, so let's go on to kind of the mechanics of how we're going to do this. Um, because we're running primarily online, we're going to use this platform called Gather, which you can get to at www.gather.town. Um, Gather Town is basically um, kind of a bit like a computer game, if you like. Uh, if you've ever kind of played Pokemon, if you're old enough like me, um, or anything like this, it's kind of like you can you have a little avatar, a little character who can walk around and explore and, and chat to people. And if you find the right keyboard shortcut, you can dance. <laughs> and there's a dedicated bite-sized talk all about Gather Town. We've been using uh, this platform for a few years. So if you're feeling lost or you're just curious, go and look up that link. And, and James explains all about Gather, how to use it, and, and various troubleshooting and tips. Um, the map this year is, is built um, based on previous years, but kind of extended. Um, a lot of work gone in here by by Chris. You can see it's uh, looking pretty fantastic with the. Uh, the sticker logo up there and, and various different kind of regions that you can explore. You can see along the top, there's kind of different doorways you can go through there for uh, different groups and the main lecture hall and various other stuff. So it's just like being in a, in a kind of real life conference venue, really. Um, you can get outside that that stuffy hall if you want to go for an explore. There's a, a nice beach to go and have a, a rest and relax if you'd like. And um, who knows what other regions you might find if you explore enough. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Um, there's a bunch of things you'll find as you walk around Gather Town, um, which will glow uh, yellow when you go close and you'll see a little pop up. Look out for these. They do different things. Um, some of them will load up relevant web pages with more information or kind of things like that. 
Um, some of them are whiteboards, which load up collaborative whiteboards where people you're working with, you know, you can jump in and, and scribble. Uh, so various different kind of elements around Galatown, look out for that. And uh, uh, one of the things that's quite difficult sometimes with many of us in Galatown all at once is finding other people. So just remember on the right hand side, you've got a toolbar. Uh, you can click that to bring up all the list of everyone there, type in someone's name. Um, click on them and then you have a few options and the one that I personally use the most is a button that says follow and that will just get your little person just to walk around the map and go and find that person so you don't have to spend ages feeling lost looking for the person you're trying to talk to. Um, and final thing when you're walking around you'll sometimes see the the screen kind of change like this where everything grays out apart from um, uh, the section that you're you're stood in and it pops up saying you've entered a private area. Uh, what these rooms are they're kind of like breakout rooms on zoom if you like you can hear everybody in that space and everybody can hear you um but it cuts off all the chatter from people outside that private space so it's good for small groups to go and kind of meet and chat without distraction there are lots of these spaces all around so as you walk around you'll see them and, and many of them are kind of dedicated rooms so to get into the gather town space please remember to use the email that you used to uh, sign up for the hackathon. Um, it's a, it's done by email list, so check your your inbox to, if you're not sure what that is. Um, and um, try and stay online on GatherTown platform, even those of you who are at local events. Sometimes it can be tempting to kind of just forget about it because there's lots going on around you in person. But remember, we're collaborating across different teams, and and GatherTown is really the key place where that happens. So treat, please try and um, keep your Keep, stay logged in and, and keep an eye on that in the background. Also, if you're having meetings or chatting to people online, remember to use your headphones if, uh, if you're in an in-person location, otherwise it can get noisy. So just try and be respectful for the people you're sat next to. Okay, what else are we doing? Slack, as always, with um, NF Core and Nextflow. So uh, if you haven't yet joined the NF Core Slack, go and um, find this link, NF Core website, and press the big green button to join. Uh, there's a button you can click on, which just takes you straight into our Slack organization. And this is where all the kind of uh, text-based conversation will happen, basically. Once you're into the Slack space, if you search for channels, the channels are where you can break up the conversation into different spaces within Slack, you'll find one dedicated for this event called Hackathon March 2024. That's not all, because there's so many of us, we break up into smaller channels dedicated on specific topics, so it's not too noisy. And so you'll find a whole bunch of them with the same prefix, um, and they are named after uh, the different kind of project groups we'll work in, so you can all chat together there in Slack, as well as a handful of other ones which are to do with social events and, and various other things. You'll also find, um, going on to the, the groups that we're working in, uh, each of these group leaders has um, prepared a video explaining roughly what the topics will be about that particular group, how it will work, and giving a kind of an introduction to it. Um, at the time of recording, uh, this isn't online yet, so I've got a screenshot from 2023, but it will look exactly the same. So it's a playlist on the um, on the NF Core YouTube uh, channel. Also, when you go to the NF Core website with the event page, you'll find all the different groups listed there with the topics um, and you should hopefully find these introduction videos embedded there. So they should be easy to find. When you signed up, you uh, will have picked the groups that you're interested in working with, but don't worry if you can't remember, don't worry if you've changed your mind, uh, it's very flexible. You can just come and go into different groups. Many people spend the three days mixed across multiple groups and that's totally fine. It's just to give you an idea of roughly where to go and the kinds of things to work on and and kind of make it easy to find people who are working on similar topics. Um, so these are, I said you had to sign up and say which groups you're interested in. This gives you an idea of how popular the different groups are. As usual, um, Pipelines is the most popular group. That's basically always the case. And of course, where we come to collaborate on Pipelines and lots of you want to do exactly that. Um, and there's also lots of people interested in joining in with uh, modules, sub workflows, NF test and training materials and infrastructure. Uh, a handful of you put things into the other text box of other things you wanted to work on. Uh, my favorite was the person who said they wanted to work on croissants. So yeah, good, enjoy that. <laughs> uh, bonus points. Okay, you've decided what you're gonna work on, you found your group, everything's great. What do you do now? First up, you pick your group and you watch the introduction video. So on YouTube, you can watch it at your leisure. 
Um, hop into Slack, find the relevant Slack channel for your group and say hello. Say who you are, where you've come from, what your experience is, what your expectations are. Uh, get chatting and see who else is around. Next up, you find um, a task that you want to work on. Um, these are either tasks you already know about, you've kind of bought your own, you know what you want to work on, that's fine. Or you go to the GitHub project board for the hackathon, which I'll show in a minute, um, and find something that sounds interesting. If you are bringing your own work, please make sure you create an issue if there isn't one already on GitHub and add it to the project board. And this way we track all of the work that's being done through the hackathon and get a feel for what people are working on. Once you've found an issue, assign yourself on GitHub. Um, so that basically puts your, your face on that issue um, and means that other people don't also pick the same issue and you do the same thing at the same time and end up duplicating someone else's work. It's fine to add more than one person to a single issue as long as you both know about it. And that just makes your work visible. And then you get on with it. Start writing some code. Um, enjoy yourself. Ask other people for help. And uh, when you're finished, make a pull request. So push your code to your fork of your uh, NF Core GitHub repo, and then open up a pull request to merge those changes back upstream. Remember, pull requests are best when they are relatively small and well described. So try not to make some kind of bare moth, which is going to be impossible to review. Keep them nice and neat and, and kind of itemized. Um, and then over time, we're going to have wrap up meetings at the end of each day. And we're going to kind of basically do a quick report of just the kinds of things that people have been working on. So remember, together with the rest of your team, uh, just keep a note of the kinds of things you're working on on those Google Slides. So the group leader doesn't have to panic at the end of the day with an empty slide, which is almost guaranteed to happen. It always happens. <laughs> OK, um, GitHub project board. What do I mean? If you go to NF Core uh, GitHub pages and click projects at the top, you'll hopefully find one called Hackathon March 2024. Um, this is a slightly overwhelming page. There's many tabs along the top and many issues. The first one is the overview, which has got loads of stuff. And then these tabs are also broken up by team, you can see there. Some of them are special. So there was ones like saying um, my issues, which filters just for the ones where you've assigned to yourself, um, ready to review, pull request you've reviewed and good first issue are ones where we've labeled ones which are good for beginners. So this is where we track and label all of the work that's going on through the duration of a hackathon and it's a tab that you should basically have open in the background the whole time. Um, when you put in that pull request, you're not done. <laughs> uh, creating the pull request is kind of step one and then getting that pull request merged is, is step two. There's two parts for this. There's firstly, uh, getting someone to review your code. Uh, and then there's usually some back and forth that, where they might suggest changes or you discuss something um, and, and before finally getting it merged. But also, of course, this is a two-way situation. So other people need you to review their code. Even if you're a beginner, doesn't matter. Everyone should be reviewing pull requests. It's a big part of getting into the community. And if you are a beginner, it's a great way to learn best practices and see how other people write code. If you are a beginner and you're nervous, don't worry, you don't have to merge anything. And it doesn't matter if multiple people um, review pull requests, that's a good thing. So just jump in and do as much as you can. It's a really great way to get involved. Um, what can happen at hackathons, we have loads of people pushing work. And if we don't get enough reviewing, we end up with like a huge backlog of pull requests which don't get merged, which is kind of a bit sad and have lots of people kind of doing um, puppy eyes or kitten eyes saying, please, can you review pull requests? And if you, you know, really towards the end of a hackathon, it will be many memes, I imagine. So <laughs> you need to sort of get in there and pull, re review, review, review. You should do as much reviewing as you do submitting a pull request, at least. The best way to do this, in our experience, is to kind of find a review buddy. Um, so find someone else maybe who sat at your table or is working in your team or something. Uh, and you can kind of swap reviews with each other as you, as you go with pull requests. Um, and this way you kind of, you know, while you're waiting for someone else to review your pull request, you can be reviewing theirs and it keeps everything moving fluidly. There's also a special Slack channel called Request Review, which is not a hackathon thing, it's there all the time. Um, so if you're kind of waiting and no one's picked it up, you can pop a link to your pull request into that channel um, and people can jump in and, and help out. Okay, um, if you're kind of, especially relatively new to Nextflow and NFCore and looking for some extra resources, uh, check out the bite-size page on the NFCore website. 
we have uh, weekly short talks there. They're typically 15 minutes long um, about all kinds of different topics. Um, some of them about pipelines and stuff, but there are many talks there aimed um, sort of as training resources, which go through all kinds of topics related to working with Nextflow and NFCore. So have a look there. There's loads of good resources and most of them have uh, transcripts. So you don't even have to watch the video if you don't want to, you can kind of skip through the text. There's also the YouTube channel um, where all of these bite sized uh, talks are hosted, but there's also many more videos on there uh, on the YouTube channel for, for NFCore and Nextflow. Um, and then there's Nextflow training material itself, where if you just like to spend the three days basically working on the training material and getting yourself up to speed with Nextflow, uh, that's absolutely a valid way to spend your time. And just generally, the NFCore website has got tons of documentation and resources. Um, of course, Hackathon isn't all work. We've got a few kind of social activities lined up for you. Uh, those of you who've been to NFCore Hackathons before will be familiar with them. Um, we've got a scavenger hunt for photos. We've got the regular bingo running, uh, find the socks, Kahoot quiz, and pizza. So the scavenger hunt is a special uh, Slack channel. Uh, Hackathon March 2024 scavenger hunt. And basically there'll be a bunch of, of um, kind of challenges posted there saying, take a photo of this thing. You know, it might be a nice view out of your window or some kind of other challenge. So uh, keep an eye out on those. And um, each time there's a challenge, you can use that kind of thread under that Slack message to post photos in response. Um, no limit, just go crazy, um, do as many as you can. It's really fun and it's a great way with all the different distributed sites, especially and online people all over around the world kind of seeing where people are working in different kind of uh, situations. So it's really fun. Um, more the merrier. We will share the, our highlights um, at the daily syncs and if there's any particularly good ones, we might send out some gifts at the end. Um, we have our regular NFCore bingo cards running, of course. You can find the link to this through the event page, uh, which is basically a whole bunch of kind of silly things and some in jokes about things like GitHub always goes down during the hackathon. So if that happens, you can see if you can find it on your bingo card and uh, give a shout if you are if you get bingo. Uh, in Gala Town, we have the NFCore socks emoji. Now, Chris Hackart has hidden five pairs of NFCore socks all around Gather. Um, before you ask, we're not going to give you any clues. He's a hard man. Uh, and when you find a pair of socks, take a screenshot so that we've proven you found it. Uh, keep track of them. And when you've got all of them, uh, send those photos to Chris and the fastest wins, basically. There will be prizes for winners. Now, it's... Uh, pretty addictive the, the sock hunt, hunt searching and they are very well hidden you can see this one from a couple of years ago where Matthias has found a sock just poking out from underneath a tree so it's not going to be made easy for you um but yeah maybe don't spend your entire three days just looking for socks <laughs> I, won't, I won't blame you if you do um on tuesday we have a quiz run on a platform called kahoot uh, and basically, it's uh, multiple choice questions. This year's uh, quiz has been done by our resident quiz master, Matthias. Um, there might be some regular ones, such as those tricky markdown questions. They always get me, uh, but it's always a lot of fun. So um, join in if you can. This is our only kind of uh, synchronous social event, which will be happening at 3 p.m. Uh, European time. And hopefully the works for most time zones. And that will be in Gala Town in the lecture theatre. This one's not going to be live streamed on YouTube or anything. Um, and then finally, if you're at local sites, uh, there will hopefully be pizza or something like it. Uh, and this is kind of totally up to each local site. So it'll be different, but depending on where you are. So if in doubt, talk to your local site coordinator. Uh, and site coordinators, uh, please talk to Chris Hackart and be nice to him. He's got much more sort of professional looking photos on the web, but when I found this one, I couldn't resist uh, ready to launch. So Chris is going to be sat there approving all of your kind of virtual credit cards. Uh, I think be slightly traumatized by it. So please be nice to him. <laughs> um, right, we're nearly there. Code of conduct by being here and signing up, you agreed to abide by it. So please just take a take 30 seconds to check over it. It's on the NFCore website. It's pretty simple. Just remember, especially for the hackathon, to ask consent from people when taking screenshots or photos of people uh, and sort of just be nice and remember to take breaks. Um, and remember also you've got an email with a checklist of all the different things you need to do to kind of get set up for the hackathon. Now, I'm sure all of you are great at reading your emails and you've already gone through this checklist, but just in case there's anyone, maybe it went into a spam folder, 
um, well, I'll whip through them super fast. So check the code of conduct. I'm sure you've done that while I've been talking. Uh, register on the NFCore Slack if you haven't already and found, find those hackathon Slack channels. Uh, register on GitHub if you've never registered on GitHub before and join the NFCore GitHub organization. You can do that by going to a Slack channel called GitHub Invitations. Wave your hand there, put up your Slack username and someone will add you to the NFCore GitHub org. And that gives you uh, right access to all the repos so you can push code and open pull requests and merge other people's more pull requests. Also means you can be assigned to issues and everything. So it's a really key part of working in a hackathon. If you find that you can't be assigned to things, and you can't review other people's pull requests, it's probably because you're not a member of the NFCore organization yet on GitHub. Um, register on Gather, join the hackathon space, uh, and then get set up locally. So get um, Nextflow and NFCore installed and some kind of way of provisioning software. Or if you prefer, join on uh, Gitpod, which is kind of virtual online uh, coding spaces and set up an environment there. There's pre-configured pre -configured NF core spaces you can use on, on Gitpod. So post on Slack if in doubt. And of course, check on the NF core website to make sure you know where to find all the docs and the training and everything else. Quick note on training, because there probably will be some of you who are kind of beginners and interested in, in doing the training. We have three courses now. We've got uh, Fundamentals, which is great for beginners. There's now Advanced Training as well, run by uh, Rob Simon Secura, which has got some really kind of more detailed topics. And a, a shorter course called Applied Training, which is great as a refresher. It's kind of hands-on. You're just writing code straight away rather than going through lots of theory. Um, we ran the foundational training just um, a few days ago. And so those videos are up on YouTube and embedded into the training website. So it should be easy to find. Uh, and the URL is training.nextflow.io. Um, next up, a couple of things that are coming up soon, just while I've got everyone's attention. Um, so in 2024, we'll have two Nextflow Summit events, just like last year, but they'll be a bit better spaced out. Um, so the first one will be in Boston in the US, and that's coming up pretty soon in May. Uh, so uh, tickets are open right now, so please do go and register. And actually, I think the, the, the deadline for submitting an abstract has just been pushed out slightly longer, so there's still time to get a talk in. It'd be great to have, see as many people there as possible. Um, and then there'll be the Barcelona event um, in October, end of October. Both of these events have associated hackathons, so these are the next NFCore hackathons after this one. Um, you can find out all the information about the events and where to register and everything else at summit.nextflow.io. Also out just a few days ago was the um, kind of Nextflow survey that we do every year, annual survey, which we call the state of the workflow. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of years now. It's kind of consistent questions roughly year to year, so we can kind of track changes and what people are interested in and, and how they're working. Um, and if you need any encouragement, there's a, a prize draw as well. So you can win a, a MacBook. And then I think 10 people will be getting a Nextflow kind of goodie bag uh, with all brand new swag with the new, nice rebranded Segura and Nextflow logos on it. So definitely worth filling out for that. I'm actually quite jealous. I haven't got all that myself yet. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a Typeform link there, uh, segura.typeform.com. Don't worry if you kind of don't get this in time, it's also posted on the NF Core Slack announcements channel, so it should be easy to find. Right, final little bit, I just wanted to kind of point to a few of the ways that we get news and updates out about um, Nextflow and NF Core, especially for those of you who are maybe a bit newer to the community. Um, also to draw attention to the fact that we now have a blog on the NF Core website, which is pretty new. Um, so the NFCore blog we use for anything NFCore specific. So we've got some articles there about new releases of NFCore tools, highlighting changes, uh, especially focusing on anything that impacts pipeline developers. Uh, there's also the Nextflow blog on the Nextflow website with lots of um, really nice articles there, some quite detailed technical things, uh, some more based around community. And then Secura has a blog as well, which is kind of includes Nextflow things, but also across the port other portfolio of um, secure uh, products and open source tools. Um, for example, I'm going to plug my own multi-QC place that I put there the other day. So across those three, there's plenty of good reading. And if you're not a fan of reading, <laughs> you can uh, catch a bunch of stuff uh, on um, video or audio. So I mentioned already we have the weekly bite-sized talks on NF Core, which are just nice short 15 minutes talks across all kinds of topics. Um, and we also have the channels podcast, um, which is a longer, more kind of in-depth thing. It goes out every couple of weeks. Um, or, and that's about everything Nextflow. So we've got some really 
kind of technical deep dives on how Nextflow language works um, from the developers of Nextflow. Also have on um, kind of users of Nextflow using it in different ways and some community talks and all kinds of stuff there. So uh, that's across uh, YouTube, but also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all, all the rest of it. Right. I've been talking long enough, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our sponsors, um, AWS and Microsoft for continuing to give us cloud credits to run all of our big tests on. So thank you for that. And a big shout out to Sakira for financially supporting the event. Um, it would be, uh, it, yeah, it makes a huge difference. So thank you, all of our sponsors. Um, also, a big thanks to everyone who's been involved in organizing the event, as always. I've listed uh, just to get her faces of a core team here who put in a phenomenal amount of work to keep everything running for NF Core, but also a big shout to the outreach team, to the maintainers team, and really all of you, you know who you are, who have had a hand in making this event happen, as well as just keeping NF Core running. Uh, it really is a fantastic community to be part of, and uh, so thank you. Right, with that, I'll let you get on. Um, local site leaders, if you guys want to talk about anything specific to your site, um, otherwise jump in, watch intro videos for your talks, get started, and have a fantastic hackathon. Thanks so much.